Um, good morning, everyone. Once again, um, my name is Nadia Miller and I'm with the City of Columbus Mayor's Office of Diversity and Inclusion. Our office uh, remains focused on advancing an equity agenda that enables every resident and business owner to thrive. Um, in the wake of the current events, we are committed to sharing response resources, information, um, and resources to support you throughout these difficult times. Um, we also encourage the small business community to use this time to develop and grow your business by taking advantage of free online trainings and webinars. So we're really excited um, that you were able to join us today for the How to Get Certified with the City of Columbus webinar in partnership with the Columbus My Morning Business um, Assistance Center. So thank you and back once again for having us today. Um, so with that, I'll get started by jumping right into our supplier team. We are under the leadership of Chief Diversity Officer, Director Beverly Stallings Johnson and Assistant Director Demita Brown. Our contract compliance and certification program managers are Ms. Tia Roseboro, um, our senior representative, and um, myself. Our business development specialists include Ms. Dewana Allen, Mr. Dwayne Parks, and Mr. Mike Pettifer. Our supplier diversity team seeks to ensure that the City of Columbus sources goods and services in all categories from diverse vendors and suppliers to expand our variety of goods and services available. Um, our mission also includes developing policies to enhance inclusion and utilization efforts within the city's procurement process and throughout our department. Business certification is a part of doing business with the city of Columbus. So let's take a look at the three easy steps. Step one, register at the city's vendor services portal. Step two, get pre-qualified if you do construction work. And step three, get MBE WBE certified with the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. And um, we will definitely walk through that today in the application. Step one, the contract compliance registration approval process. A contract compliance number must be obtained in good standing before you can do business with the City of Columbus. Our office is responsible for ensuring that all vendors, including suppliers, contractors, and subcontractors that desire to be a party on a city contract must hold a valid contract compliant number. Um, this process helps us verify if your company is an equal opportunity employer. Um, so once you're approved, a contract compliant number is assigned um, to you and it will be active for two years. To receive this free two-year compliance number, the business must register and complete the contract compliant EBO questionnaire within our vendor services portal. So let's take a closer look at the EBO questionnaire um, that must be completed in order to attain your contract compliant number. Um, before we review the questions of the questionnaire, I do want to mention that these questions are regarding current and possible employees. So even if you don't currently have any employees, it may just be yourself, um, we do encourage you to fill out the form for prospective employees as well. So the first question, pretty simple, what date was the company founded? What is the president's name? How much were last fiscal year's gross annual sales? How many, how many employees reside in the Columbus MSA? And please note, if you have 50 or more employees, um, you will be required to submit the federal EEO-1 form to our office, which is a separate process. Um, but I did just want to mention that. Um, the next question, does applicants conspicuously post its EEO policy? 
So even without employees, would you post your EEO policy? Um, an equal opportunity would yes, post their EEO policy. Is the EEO policy available to current and prospective employees? Does the applicant indicate that it is an equal opportunity employer in employment ads and solicitations? Um, the questionnaire continues, has the applicant notified all of its hiring sources that it does consider employment of all qualified candidates, regardless of race, color, region, religion, gender, national origin, or ancestry? Does the applicant use subcontractors? If you do not use subcontractors, that is fine. You can say no here. However, the very next question, if the applicant uses subcontractors, does the applicant notify its subcontractors that they are required to comply with the city's equal opportunity guidelines? Um, so even if you don't have subcontractors, it is regarding prospective subcontractors. So here you would, um, an equal opportunity employer would say yes, that if they use subcontractors, they will be notified. Um, the next, it's not a question, it's more of um, we, we would like to know if you are certified with any other agency. So please list any current certifications from other agencies such as the State of Ohio MBE program, um, the State of Ohio WBE program, ODOT DBE, or any other minority certification programs you have may already been certified with. Um, if there are none, you can simply enter none. If eligible, are you interested in becoming a certified vendor with the City of Columbus? And this is where you would indicate yes um, and express your interest with our certification program. And at that point, you'll be on our radar and we will reach out to you, um, thanking you for your interest and providing you with additional information there. So what's great is our city's purchasing office and vendor services um, within the finance and management department provides step-by-step -step instructional videos to help walk through different city processes, including the contract compliant number uh, process that we're currently talking about. Um, so you may notice that there's two video links here that pertain to vendor registration process. So this is because you must create a vendor profile first in order to access the EBO questionnaire. So the vendor profile takes 24 hours to activate. Once the profile is activated the next day, um, you're able to return to the vendor portal, sign in, and then you'll able, you're able to access the EBO questionnaire. So it is twofold. Um, so that, that vendor profile does take 24 hours to get activated. And then we do require you to uh, return to the portal the next day um, or thereafter to complete your EBO questionnaire. Um, as I describe the process, it may seem complicated, but I would like to share a brief video to give you an inside look to show you a, how quick and easy the process actually is. So first we'll take a look at the vendor registration process.
Nadia? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, some people were saying no sound. I just, I guess, need to know that you're still there. Oh. Can you hear my video? Uh, no, we can't really hear the video portion of oh, it. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So you may have to just walk us through that process or just talk above the video. Okay. And we'll definitely include the link. Um, yes, so I'll definitely, definitely we'll um, send it provide out the link. Okay, mm -hmm. and we'll send it out to the participants so they can walk through that video as well. Sorry okay. about that, you guys. So I don't know if I should continue the visual, but I do want to mention that the video is only four minutes long. So I'll just notate that and be sure to add those links um, in the email for the follow-up. I also was going to um, share another video um, that is the vendor services step-by-step -step walkthrough. And I just want to notice, um, just mention that is a less than two minute video. So here you're able to see, um, hoping to show you in real time that it's possible to complete the process in less than 10 minutes when prepared. So hopefully preparing you today, you're actually be able to walk through the steps and these videos actually do walk step by step through the process. And I just wanted to share the videos because I wanted to show you how quickly um, the videos are and how brief it would actually take to complete the process. Um, and we will be sure to send you those links and follow up with those links as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So once those um, instructional videos are reviewed, um, you will visit vendor, service at, vendor services at columbus.gov and the vendor portal, and we will provide that link as well. But once contract compliance is approved, registration is a two-year term. Your approval date is reviewed and your approval date is the date that we review and process uh, your form and your EBO questionnaire. The expiration date is two years from your approval date. So once we review and process, the approval letter is sent to the business. And here's an example of an approval letter. This letter will confirm your approval and it will also contain your vendor contract compliant number, also known as your vendor number or vendor ID. When your expiration date approaches, a 60-day notice for contract compliant renewal will be issued to your company's email address that you provided us previously. Um, so please keep your contract, keep your contact information updated to ensure um, timely communications are received successfully um, because failure to renew will adversely impact your company's ability to submit bids on city projects. So it could delay payments on existing contracts as well. So here is um, the link directly to our vendor services portal, as well as their email um, and contact information. So if you have any questions while you're in the vendor portal, completing your vendor registration or your contract compliance um, EBO questionnaire, Please contact vendor services for direct support with the vendor portal. Even if it's a password reset, you would contact um, vendor services to get you set up. After submission, feel free to contact me or my office of diversity and inclusion to check the status of your submission. Um, or if you have any other related questions, maybe you need another copy of your approval letter or anything of that nature. Um, step two of the how to do business with the city is pre-qualification. For general construction and licensed construction trade contractors, um, I wanted to quickly mention pre-qualification because it, it, is, it is a part of the three easy steps. Um, however, I would like to emphasize that pre-qualification is separate than contract compliance and business certification. Um, and it is not managed by the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. 
Um, so since this is a separate process that's administered outside of our office, we encourage you to contact the Office of Pre-Qualification directly to get the most complete and accurate information. So finally, we've re arrived to step three of the three easy steps to doing business. And this is diverse business certification for minority and women owned businesses. There are many advantages to doing business um, and being certified, including, to, including the ability to identify your business as a minority woman or veteran owned business, being listed in the certified directory for potential connections, um, guidance from our business development specialist, and access to city purchasing opportunities, and the list continues. Um, but without uh, further delay, let's jump into the actual certification application. So here, um, this is the City of Columbus Office of Diversity and Inclusion unified application. And unified just meaning that um, both women and minority businesses will use this same application. So the, the first page is instructions of how to complete, um, but in general, um, the application must be completed and include all the supplemental required documentation. Um, there is a checklist on page six and seven. If an incomplete application is received, we will reach out to you and request additional documentation. ODI will make a prompt determination of the certification process of all businesses and applicants will be notified within 30 days after receipt of a complete application and all the required documents. So we will go over today uh, what consists of a complete application. Also, an on-site visit is required to complete the certification process and shall be scheduled within the 30-day processing period. Um, if the applicant is unavailable, for the on-site review during the period, uh, we are willing to extend the processing period for you. Um, I also just wanted to mention that um, I, a frequent question, um, are home offices suitable for on-sites? They are. Office, um, home offices are suitable to complete an on-site visit. Um, if your business primarily operates online, um, that is totally fine. We will also uh, make it possible for you to meet at our offices and we will give you the opportunity to provide clarification on exactly how your online operation works and you can walk us through how you provide your products and services exactly. I um, just wanted to also mention that all the information that is submitted is considered confidential. Once approved, it is a three-year term a certification period. So we do have a um, physical address if you prefer to mail in your application um, during this time where we have been social distancing and um, quarantine we are accepting applications via email as well the next page is the definitions um, of the application so we just wanted to give you some insight on city code and what we consider and what defines a minority business enterprise um, MBE shall mean it's independent and continuing operation for profit. Um, so in order to be certified, you must be a for-profit business. Also perform commercial useful function and owned and controlled by one or more persons of African-American, Asian Indian, or Hispanic descent. You must also be a, U a US citizen. For a women business enterprise, it's very much the same. You must be a for-profit, um, but it must be owned and controlled by one or, one or more women that are US citizens. And the letter C here um, kind of goes into more of the eligibility requirements. And um, a business must be 51% owned. Um, I do get a frequently asked question of 50-50, but you must be majority owner. So um, you must be a minimum of 
once again, the ban it, the business must be managed um, and controlled by the minority or woman seeking certification. The business must also have been in business for six months. So as long as you've been in business for six months um, and able and are able and capable to provide a business services, um, you are eligible to apply. We do welcome you to apply um, within the, the county's MSA area. So the Columbus MSA County, you may hear me say that a few times, um, is not just res restricted to the city of Columbus. It, it does include the surrounding counties, which is Franklin County, Delaware, Fairfield, Fayette, Lincoln, Madison, Pickaway, and Union. Uh, the fourth point here with annual sales, we're going to dive a little deeper and we'll show you what um, how we investigate annual sales. There's more definitions here. Um, I encourage you to read um, how the code defines a veteran shall mean a person who served in the active military. Um, and all, all these definitions are um, for the application and for the purpose of these terms as you go through the application. All right, so this is the first page of the actual application portion. First thing I really wanted to mention is the designations. You'll notice that you must select one or the other you can actually only be listed under one designation at a time. So if you are a minority owned business and also qualify as a woman, it is totally your choice on which designation you prefer uh, to be the program you would like to participate in. Um, however, if you are a veteran, you are able to elect a veteran to supplement your primary designation. So if you are a WBE and a veteran, you can indicate that here. So I just um, wanted to give a preview of the application here to really show it's pretty standard. It does request the company name. Um, the very second question is the contract compliance vendor number, um, which is that first process we went through earlier that could potentially be done um, within 10 minutes of your time. It is very important that you obtain your vendor number first, um, because if we do receive an application, we're unable to process you within the city system without a vendor profile. So that was intentional, kind of showing you the contract compliant process first, and that vendor ID you would be able to input right there. So moving forward, just add address, telephone, contact information, some really general information here. your type of business, it does require you to select one. So it does wanna know your primary function. Um, we do leave a field below for you to kind of describe any secondary and other functions um, or services you may offer. The next section is the legal structure section. Um, and it will require you to let just one here. If you are LLC, you can select the corporation for the limit, limited liability corporation, or feel free to select other, and you can type in LLC here. It moves on um, to request your federal tax ID number, your operating radius, which may be local, regional, or national. Now back to the annual sales. So here we're requesting the annual sales for the last two years. Um, I did mention you are able to apply if you are six months in business. So you may not have two years of sales. So go ahead and input the most current recent available sales here. Um, it may be your to date um, or you can elect zero and then we will request additional documentation such as a financial statement that's current that you may not have um, reported your annual sales yet for the first time and there's other documentation that will help us um, figure out those annual sales. So don't get um, too caught up here. Um, if you have been in business for a while, maybe five years, um, we just need you to fill in 2018. 
in 2019. Nadia, this is Janine with NBAC, <laughs> building the chat box for questions. And there's yes. one really specific to revenue. And we have a question here that is, what if your startup expenses outweigh sales in the beginning? So let's say you're working in the negative. Um, mm -hmm. How should that be reported? What documents should they expect to supplement with the application? And will that have an adverse impact on the application? Um, there will not be an adverse impact um, for you may be working in the negative. Um, that is pretty typical. Um, sometimes for a startup business, it may take some time um, to create those revenues and that earning. Um, so what we will do is, um, like you said, Janine, expect uh, or request additional documentation. Um, and the annual sales is really a number that you can find on your business taxes. So that number will be a number that does consider um, your expenses and your revenue. So that it will be a combined number there when you actually file your taxes. Um, that number, I don't remember the box number, but um, that number is directly from your taxes. And then if you have not actually submitted taxes yet, the, su the supplemental doc documentation will be um, kind of like, we will accept a bank statement, if you will, and, it, and, and, and hopefully your bank statement will show those transactions of expenses um, and any sales. So um, we don't require a accounting form or actual balance sheet. We do accept it, but we don't require it for those businesses who don't have a personal accountant. We, we have started um, accepting your bank statement to review your transactions and your transactions should reveal to us that you may be working in a negative, but that does not adversely affect your certification at all. I hope that answered the question. Perfect, that was okay. spot on. Thank you so much, Nadia. Mm -hmm. So just to dive back in, um, the dates for your fiscal year, it may be a typical calendar year. If not, you can describe what your business fiscal year is here. Has the company done business or is currently doing business under a, a different DBA or previously um, doing business under a different name? You can list that there. The date the business was established and how the business was acquired. It may be a started business. Um, sometimes we've seen maybe where you've bought out a partner or merged here. So uh, you will be able to elect how you acquired your business. This bottom section does start to dive in with the partners in the company, the employers in the company, and the ownership of the company. Um, so here you'll, if you are 100% owner, you would just put your name, your gender, and the information across here, and you would just put 100%. If you're 51% owner, you would put your 51% here. And then we would like to see um, the other partners, even if they're not minority, that's fine. We would still like to see their percentage owned. The next page um, does go into more of a salary um, of the owners of the company. So um, if you're the owner, once again, it'd be your name, um, your office um, or division in the, in the company, race, gender, and salary. Um, your partners that are non-minorities, uh, we also would like to see their salaries listed here if there are any partners that you may have. Which kind of goes into this section here. You'll notice that only the first question is regarding capital contributions made by the minority or female owner. This is the person that even makes certification eligible for the company. And if it's 100% just yourself, you would just answer this A. B through H does refer to the non-minority females. Um, and so sometimes this may not apply if there are non, if there are any non-minorities or any female partners. This may be left blank if you don't have any non-minority or non-female partners. How was, a sub, how was the company started or acquired? So on the previous page, they let you select 
was it a startup or a merger? Here it wants a little bit additional information. Um, you may have started your company with 10 bucks or possibly a, a business loan from a bank. Um, and the business loan should have provided you with your business loan documentation, which is very standard. Um, let us know if you have any issues accessing or obtaining um, some of the documentation we're requesting. Um, a gift is also listed here um, and you can select multiple. It may have been a combination of these options of how they got started. Um, so page four here, we actually break down a list of functions here on the left. If you're uh, the owner and CEO and it's 100% yourself, you can list your name here and you can just maybe do quotation marks, um, and you don't have to fill out the whole thing if it's just yourself. Uh, we do understand that um, if you're 100%, you do own all of these responsibilities that are listed. Um, so even though we listed these, these responsibilities, if there is any person um, that does work for you, but was not, you were not able to list under these functions, feel free to put their affiliation here. Now the next question, it kind of split this page and the next page. So um, if there's a business relationship existing between an applicant and a majority business, so a non-minority business, um, does the applicant or does the relationship include anything shared? So do you have a relationship with the majority company and you may share um, a workspace? So you're able to select that there. Um, you may share employees, maybe an admin, um, and you're able to select that there. If you do share employees, you're able to put them there. In most cases, um, I, you may not be, you know, have a relationship with the majority firm. And if that's the case, um, simply you can skip this section and it does not apply to you if you do not have a relationship with the majority firm. We would just like to see how much that majority firm is involved in and how much you guys are um, combined and shared when it comes to certain spaces or leases or rent. Um, we're That's what we're actually looking to investigate there. So um, the next section here, it really goes into, have you ever received certification um, from another agency? So if yes, um, you can go ahead and select yes, and you may have um, WeBank or the state of Ohio, MBE, and you can list that there. They do also provide an approval letter um, like us, and so you can just list your approval date or the date you received your approval there. We also um, need to know if your company has ever been denied certification. Um, but if not, just select no, and you can move right on to the current employee data. The current employee data is pretty clear. Um, we would just like a breakdown of your employees. So there is a female column and a male column broken down here by ethnicity. And if it's just yourself, um, please count yourself when you're regarding your employee, employee data. So that actually completes our form. So walking through that form there, that is um, the initial certification process. And then we talked about possibly supplemental documentation. So the first page did refer to page six as a checklist. So here's that checklist. Two business credit references include names of company, contact person, title, address, and telephone number. Now, I just wanted to make a point. I do get a frequently asked question for this first um, item on the checklist. And an example of two business credit references would be any professional reference. So um, as long as they can address your capability and your performance of the firm, we will accept their reference. Um, this could include um, existing clients, any existing clients, 
um, or any partnerships, uh, maybe your accountant or a personal banker that has maybe helped you set up your business account, we will accept all of those examples. The second item is a copy of your license required by the city or state. You may be a licensed trade um, contractor or um, you may require a license or a professional service license, maybe you're a CPA. Um, we will um, like to request a copy of those licenses. Item three is submitting evidence of any outstanding loans. Item four is resume of principal. Um, that is also uh, maybe a bio we will accept as well. Office and rental lease agreements. Your bank resolution or signature card. So when you do set up your business bank account, um, the bank does require um, a signature card um, so they know whose signature to accept. Um, if you don't have a bank card, please contact your bank. They should be able to provide you one fairly easy. Let us know if you have any issues there. Item seven, birth certificates of a minority principal. We do require the birth certificate for uh, a woman principal as well. So I know it says birth certificate for, for minorities, but we um, also request the birth certificate for women principals as well. Item eight, submit business capability statement. Um, capability statement, it may be a formal capability statement, um, but we will accept every, anything that has um, your company's services and products that you offer. Um, so we will accept something like a flyer or whatever you use um, to describe your products and services. Um, and it may be a formal capability statement or a flyer. And item nine, if you are a veteran, please include your DD-214. So that is Janine again, I'm gonna hop in and see if I can get a couple new questions addressed. Is that okay? Sure. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, I want to touch base on the reference letter. There's a question here. If it was written with a past date or a former date for an alternate purpose, can it still be used or would we need a updated reference letter? Um, we will accept a previously dated reference letter um, and I would say as long as it's within, I would say as long as it's with, within the last 24 months, um, although certification is a three year, um, we try to keep it as current as possible. Um, however, the reference letter does not have to be necessarily written by um, your reference and can be um, simply provided by yourself on your company letterhead. Oh, okay. Good to know. Good to know. And you may get to this um, in the upcoming slides. What's the process for renewal? Um, actually, I can briefly touch base on that. Renewal um, is actually a simplified process. So this, uh, this initial process, requesting this information, once we have your documentation on file, in three years when the term comes due, we will, um, 60 days prior to expiration, we will notify you um, and let you know um, you're due for renewal. And we will also provide you an attachment of the application and also a link to the application um, for you to complete and return. The recertification application is a two-pager, just to give you an idea on the simplified form. And um, we do request you to provide any supplemental documentation at that point. If any business um, information has changed, we just ask you to update it at that time. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. so great questions. I um, am, we completed the checklist here. And so I'm just looking at the sole proprietorship and partnership structures. You'll notice that um, the sole proprietorship checklist is uh, fairly small here. We just need a copy of your individual tax returns for the past three years. So that's your, that's your individual returns as the owner. Um, we also require the company's federal taxes for the past three years, um, if available. So if you've only been open a year, we will accept one year. Also the company's last financial statement, and um, that's a frequently asked question, the company's financial statement 
can also be, or an example um, of a statement would be a recent bank statement. So that bank statement will really still give us uh, insight on financial transactions, um, similar to what the participant asked a little, a little earlier um, in regards to how we investigate um, financial statements. So the partnership actually lists the same three items here. And then corporation actually includes limited li liability corporations. So I just, I wanna reiterate that, um, that corporation does include LLCs. So the LLC does also require the same as the two previous structures, your individual federal tax, your company federal tax, and your company's last financial statement. In addition to that, um, articles of incorporation, um, we do require a copy. So we put a little notation there that you can obtain a copy of your certificate from the Secretary of State, the Ohio Secretary of State. And um, we found that you can actually go directly to the Ohio Secretary of State, do a business search and obtain a copy of your certificate uh, fairly quickly. So. Um, if you don't have a copy of your certificate, um, you will be able to get one fairly quickly there. It does say bylaws. A lot of LLCs do not have bylaws, um, but some corporations do. Um, if bylaws do not apply, um, that you can bypass um, dra drafting any bylaws or anything of that nature for LLCs. Same thing for co um, a copy of the stock certificate. A lot of LLCs do not have stock. So um, that item would not be applicable. Agreement containing options to purchasing or acquiring stock may or may not be applicable. Shareholder guarantees for any debt. A schedule of corporations by shareholders uh, preceding three years. And then a meeting minutes for your board meetings. Um, that corporations are required to have board meetings, but LLCs may not. So, these items here, it, it does include corporations and LLCs. However, whenever you get to the point, such as a copy of stock and it's um, not applicable, feel free, feel free to bypass that. Or if there's any confusion there, reach out, give us a call, and I will confirm um, what supplemental documentation applies to you. Additionally, we may uh, require to submit some more additional information such as um, a list of your rental equipment um, that's owned or leased, copies of uh, vehicles owned, um, the titles, your Dun & Bradstreet number, um, proof of capital that you invested. Um, so earlier in the application we kind of just said could you tell us what you invested? Um, depending on the scenario we may request proof of your uh, initial investment. Um, or a copy of your W-2 of the principles there. Sorry, Janine, I seen something blink and I didn't know if that was you, okay. I was responding to one of the questions, um, but since you gave me some minutes here, let me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a question or two. Uh, let's see here. There, MBAC also works on uh, minority business enterprise certifications for the state. Mm -hmm. And with the state, they may have an expedited <clears throat> process as long as the application is in response to a bid that has some time constraints on it, right? So we need mm -hmm. to get the certification done quickly um, because we have a time limit um, for an upcoming bid. Mm -hmm. Is there something similar for a city cert certification? Do you have an expedited process? Absolutely. Actually, I'm glad you asked because sometimes there are cases where um, you may be bidding and it, it, it is time sensitive and we have this 30 day turnaround. Please let us know that you are currently bidding um, on a city project because the, com the city and our departments are very much um, connected. And so we will try to get you certified prior to the bid or we will let the department know you are in the process of becoming certified. And if you do get the bid, 
and become certified within that calendar year, you are still counted and you are still um, considered an MBE at the time of award. Um, but we do have an exped uh, ex expedite, we are able to expedite, excuse me, um, your application as long as you um, provide some sort of notice so we know um, to take special attention to um, your application. Is that going to be in the form of a cover letter? Um, is there a, a, another document that needs to be provided by the city? Is that an email, a phone call, a text? You know, I, it, all that is fine, honestly. Um, a cover letter would be great to go on top of the application, um, but any simple notice, um, if you do submit your application via email, feel free to put it in the body of the email um, and just let us know it's time sensitive. Um, if you do have time, give us a call. Um, and that way we just, we, if we're gonna expedite your certification and you give us a call, we're able to look at the application directly with you on the phone and say, okay, I understand you wanna get this through. We're missing a few documentations. Can you get that to me today? Excellent. Um, I think that was a primary question. I was fielding another question on LLCs and sole proprietors. So um, I will hop off and let you get back at it. Thank you. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Um, so lastly here, you will see an affidavit that is uh, that does require a notary seal. And that is pretty standard across the industry. Um, like Janine was saying, maybe the state of Ohio um, and all the certification agencies. We just want that, notar um, that notary seal here, just confirming that all the information submitted was accurate. So you can just read this little disclosure here. And um, with the banks were down for a while, we were accepting the application without the notary and you following up. So let us know um, during the current circumstances with COVID and other things, if you have any issues obtaining your uh, notary, just let us know that. So just to recap really quickly, um, the MBE WBE certification, the business is at least 51% or more owned um, by one or more persons of eligible racial minority or women gender. The business is managed and controlled by the minority or women person seeking certification. And the certification is a three year term. Um, certification expires three years from the approval date. Also, the company must have been in business at least six months within the Columbus Metropolitan Service Area. I just wanted to give you a visual here um, so you can see the surrounding counties and what the MSA includes. Which brings us to the different types of applications. So today we reviewed the most common application, the unified certification application for diverse businesses located inside of the MSA. For businesses that are located outside of the MSA, we still welcome you to get certified. Um, please use the registration application. It's still unified for both minority and women. It's just for those non-local, maybe located outside of the MSA, but we still do accept um, your certification. And for those already certified with another agency, um, such as the State of Ohio or the Women's Business Enterprise National Council or Ohio Minority Supplier Development Council, or ODOT or any um, existing certifications you may have, please let us know in advance um, or use the unified reciprocal certification application. And the reason why is we really um, wanna attempt to um, not duplicate your efforts. So if you've gone through this process um, with another agency and have been properly vetted by one of our partners. Um, we do require an application to be filled out, but it is a simplified application. So we do want you to be able to take advantage of that if you are already certified. So um, just remember in the event of any changes of pertinent information, um, you may change your company name, ownership, legal structure, maybe add a partner. 
or you may simply change locations or uh, change your phone number. You are required to update your contract compliance information on the vendor services portal, that original, that first process we uh, discussed. And then you're also um, required to contact our office and update your business certification information. So please contact us if anything changes. We would just wanna make sure we have the most current and accurate information on file. So once you're certified um, and by, once you're certified by a certification and compliance specialist, so that's illustrated in the top row right there, Please take advantage of our supportive services. So after certification, um, please take advantage of our supportive services. Stay in contact with us. Um, feel free to schedule a consultation with our business development specialists. They're kind of in that middle, the illustrated in the middle there. Um, basically, if you schedule a consultation with us and, and, and are willing to meet with us, we will continue to guide you and support you and help navigate you through the city's purchasing process and help navigate you um, with bids from different departments. And you can see the different departments illustrated under each business development specialist. We really wanna advocate on your behalf and we would really like the process to be as seamless as possible. So with our guidance, um, you may see a bid that falls under public utilities. Um, and public utilities I know can be a really big department to navigate. Um, so we suggest maybe reaching out to us, scheduling a meeting with a business development specialist and having us kind of assist with that relationship there. So once you get certified, it's just the beginning there. We really um, advise you or request that you stay in contact with us. And here's how you're able to do that. City of Columbus Office of Diversity and Inclusion. Um, for those who may be by phone, it's 614-645-4764. Or feel free to email, excuse me, feel free to email us, um, diversitycertifications at columbus.gov. If you have a question, I just wanted to throw this in there. If you have a question that's not related to certification, still feel free to give us a call. Um, or feel free to email our general email, odi at columbus.gov and we will also um, address any concerns you may have. So at this time, I would like to open back up to Janine and see if there's any questions now that um, they've seen the complete kind of picture. This has been phenomenal, Nadia. I, it's answered questions that I had and questions I didn't know I had about the city certification. So I thank you very much for walking us through the application because that can be you know sometimes those processes can be intimidating you're not sure where to start what it looks mm -hmm. like or how to answer so this has been really really good um, there was another question about who specifically can we go to for an expedited ex application so let's have the scenario if um, they're doing a state expedited certification which MBAC will help with um, can they use that same information to get the process expedited if they're also going for a city bid? Um, yes, you can contact, um, the actual individual you can contact is myself or our senior representative, which is Tia, Tia Roseboro, and she does process um, primarily most of our certification applications. She has been with the city um, for 20 plus years and she's very familiar with the investigation process and getting, can get you expedited. Um, however, if you are unable to contact Tia, please contact me directly. Um, if you do not receive me, anybody in our office will make sure that we get the message, but I do want to give you an individual name and Miss Tia Roseboro um, will be the primary as far as expediting. Um, she will definitely be the one to kind of um, make the approvals to move it forward a little quicker. I love the ownership. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, let's hear. We just got a new question. I'm working with a client that is a WBENC certified and she would like to be city certified. Can she provide her WBENC certification to expedite her city WBE certification 
also would need to get her city affidavit notarized. Who can she go to in your offices for that type of assistance? Um, a WBE that's um, already certified uh, with WeBank, it, we will expedite it. It is a simplified process. So I want to answer the question accurately. If they're located outside of the MSA, they will still use the registration application mm -hmm. and uh, provide a copy of the WeBank uh, certificate. If they're located inside of the MSA, we will have them complete the reciprocal application, which is still a simplified application um, and still provide a copy of their rebank application. So that's very common for us. Um, we will definitely know how to um, process her application and mm -hmm. you can actually give her my name, Nadia Miller, um, to email it over to us at diversity certifications and we will get her taken care of. Awesome, and I, can you go back to the slide, Nadia, that had your email address there, just so everyone has the opportunity to capture that. I don't wanna mistype, perfect. Um, and through that, we can also get the expedited uh, uh, expert, right? An application expert in your office? Yes, that is correct. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Questions from you all, this is the time to ask. It seems like you've done such a phenomenal job. Um, there are no more questions, Nadia. <laughs> Great. Great. No, that's awesome. I really um, appreciate everyone's time today. It's valuable. I know I went a little longer than my allotted time, um, but I really appreciate your interest in, in, in getting certified with the City of Columbus. I wanted to put up our information again. Um, this is actually our website as well here where you can find all of our applications as well stay in tune with updated information that's uh, we have a lot of updates and changes coming in our office here soon so we do encourage you to stay connected and I just wanted to say thanks again to MBAC for really inviting us and hosting um, our webinar today and we really appreciate partnering with you um, thanks so much you are so very welcome this is a very important issue for um, business owners and the minority and women small owned business space. So mm -hmm. knowing that we have you as a resource now that we can put faces and names and websites together, you just seem so much more accessible um, and, and able to work with us and our clients. So I thank you in turn. I thank all of our participants for your active engagement. This has been an incredible workshop. We will make sure that we have the recording available to you on our We Care blog. It will also be linked uh, to our YouTube channel. Um, and I invite you to sign up for our Facebook uh, channel as well and follow in back on all the great things that we're doing. Thank you all. Be well, be safe, and be strong.